Good day and welcome to Medicine with Dr. Morin. I'm Dr. Keith Morin. Today I've got an intriguing video for you. It's all about upper GI tract endoscopy, otherwise known as gastroscopy. We're going to review the procedure itself, some of the preparation, the anatomy in particular, and at the end there will be a full length video so that you can see exactly what I see when I do the procedure. Let's get started. I'm going to show the anatomy so that you understand what we're doing when we do an upper GI tract endoscopy. Essentially, we look at the upper airway, the esophagus, the stomach, and the first part of the duodenum. The endoscopy is often called by other names such as a gastroscopy, although that's less specific because gastro indicates stomach, and we're scoping more than just the stomach. In England, it's often called an OGD. The O is for esophagus with the English spelling. G for gastro and D for duodenum. So esophago-gastro-duodenoscopy, which is quite a mouthful. The procedure itself, one needs to prepare for nothing to eat in terms of solid food for eight hours prior to the procedure. You can have clear fluids up to two to three hours before the procedure. Majority of my patients have it done with some sedation, but it can be done with just simply local spray to the upper airway. Approximately 30 to 50% of my patients have it done that way. Next, I want to show the anatomy. I'm going to rotate the mannequin here because we start at the teeth and the lips. The scope is advanced over the top of the tongue. This is the tongue here and it's angled downwards to go to the back of the throat. Now the esophagus is a posterior structure, meaning it's towards the back. And this is the entrance way where my finger is to go in there. You will see there's a yellow structure here, a little flap. That's called the epiglottis. That epiglottis or flap will fold down and cover the vocal cords, which is just below it, so that when you swallow food, the food doesn't go down the wrong way. The food will be guided into the esophagus. Now I want to show you where the esophagus is once we pass this section. And to do that, I have to get rid of some of the organs. And the reason is, is it's a posterior structure. So I'm going to remove the lungs. And then I'm going to remove the heart. Now you can see posteriorly this brown structure. It looks like a tube. And it's the esophagus. It starts at about 20 centimeters from the lips and it goes all the way down to the bottom part where it joins the stomach right here at 40 centimeters, again a distance from the lips. The esophagus is circular and it's like a tube and it transports the food down. You will see on the video that I'm about to show some peristaltic waves which are waves of contraction. This is a muscular organ that contracts to squeeze, to push the food down into the stomach. Now at the end of the esophagus, in this light blue color, going from one edge of the body all the way to the center, and then again across here is the diaphragm. It's a big muscular structure, and it will have a hole in it that the esophagus right here goes through. And that's called the diaphragmatic hiatus. Now I'm going to remove the liver. The liver is in brown here so that you can see the stomach. This is the stomach. I'm going to remove it here for a minute so you can see it. The junction between the stomach and esophagus is right here at the diaphragm. And you will see on the video that the lining looks different. And that's because there are different cells that line the stomach compared to the esophagus. The stomach is an organ which secretes acid to help digest and break down the food into smaller uh, components so that it can leave the stomach through the end of the stomach, which is called, where there's an opening called the pylorus. And the food will then go down there into this section, which is the small intestine. The first bit of the small intestine has a special name. It's called the duodenum. Now you'll notice that the stomach uh, has a particular shape to it. 
Part of the stomach sits up high here. This part is called the fundus, and it's hard to see that part with the scope. The scope has a camera on the end that looks forward. So when you're looking forward and the scope is here, you're not going to see this section. And so when we do the scope, when you see the video, you will see that I perform a maneuver which we call retroflexing the scope, where we bend it on itself and basically get turn it into a J. So the scope comes down and then it twists like a big hook and looks back upon itself so that we can see this section in here, because this is poorly seen if we just put the scope down forward viewing. Now the small intestine here, this is the beginning, and it turns to go down further into the abdomen, and this is the entire small intestine here, which ultimately joins with the large intestine, which is in blue. The small intestine is this pinkish color, and the large intestine, which is also known as the colon, is actually in blue. And the colon starts here, and there'll be a separate video on my colonoscopy that will go over the anatomy, and there will be nice video on a colonoscopy so you can see what that's like if you're having one done. But the colon, there's a section called the ascending colon, this section is called the transverse colon because it goes across the abdomen in a transverse fashion and then down into the descending colon here. And the descending colon ultimately turns into the sigmoid colon, then the rectum, and then the bowel contents come out through the anus. I am now going to show you what an upper GI tract endoscopy looks like from my perspective. We're starting in the mouth here. The white arrow points towards the tongue and the black arrow is showing the root down into the throat area. As you can see, I'm angling down and the black arrow is now pointing to the uvula. That's the part that hangs down that you can see when you open your mouth and the white arrow shows the epiglottis. Looking further down, the vocal cords are pointed out by the white arrow, and the route down into the esophagus is pointed by the black arrow. There's some secretions or bubbles that you can see, which are white in this picture. Now I'm going to slide along the posterior wall of the posterior part of the pharynx and pop through the upper esophageal sphincter there, which you can see contracting. I'm now advancing the scope down into the esophagus. The esophagus is two centimeters in diameter to give you a size comparison. You will see waves of contraction. I'm now down in the lower esophagus and you will see the junction between the esophagus and the stomach. The white arrow is pointing to that junction. The black arrow is pointing towards the hole that will take us into the stomach. The folds of the stomach you can see just above the black arrow. We often call this the gastroesophageal junction. You'll see the difference in lining between the esophageal lining and the stomach lining. The esophageal lining being a pink gray mucosa. Now going down into the stomach, I'm putting air in at this point, or CO2 as we use now. I'm making a turn to the right. There's some liquid in the bottom of the stomach there, as you can see, which is the green, greeny yellow liquid. There's a number of bubbles here, and I'm wiping my screen here. You'll see flashes of water coming across the screen. That's the end of the stomach there. That little hole is called the pylorus, which is a muscular opening, which when it opens, will let the scope pop into the duodenum, the first part of the intestine, which I'm now in, and we are now down into the duodenum. And the scope will be advanced down the duodenum, The duodenum is the first part of the small intestine. You can see I'm rotating the scope around here and angling the scope upwards. The mucosa is glistening here. You'll see me wipe the screen with water. Now here I'm pointing out the villi. The villi look like finger-like projections. 90% of the digestion absorption of food come in through the small intestine. These are one cell thick lining and the villi give additional 
mucosal surface in order for the food to be absorbed. Often they're easiest to see when there's some liquid on top and that's why you see the yellowish liquid that's on top that allows you to see it. Some people say it looks like a shag carpet. Now I'm withdrawing the scope here and as I withdraw the scope it falls back quickly into the stomach which often is the case and then you have to advance it back into the duodenum. This video is edited. I've taken some sections out but it gives you a good idea of what the duodenum looks like. Now we're in the stomach. You'll see the stomach's red. There's some red linear markings that that arrow's pointing to. There's very mild stomach information which was confirmed on biopsy in this particular case. There's many different causes for stomach inflammation. The purpose of the stomach is to store food. It's also to grind the food down and to mix the food by secreting acid primarily. There are muscles in the stomach that help contract to grind the food down. Here I am taking biopsies of these areas that are reddened. You can see those red lines again in the stomach. The stomach really is a storage reservoir for food in order for the food to get broken down. I'm taking some initial, uh, additional rather biopsies from the stomach. We often take two from the end of the stomach, two from the area we just took from, and then the final two will be from what we call the body of the stomach. You're looking at the body of the stomach there, and the way we know that is that we can see folds. You will see folds in this part of the stomach which you can see along the bottom surface here where the biopsy forceps is going into. These biopsies are painless, so if you're having an upper GI tract endoscopy done without sedation, uh, this does not hurt. I'm now going to retroflex the scope so you can see the scope in the foreground with the number 20. And I'm going to rotate the scope around so that I can look into the upper part of the stomach, which we call the fundus. I'm adding some air, uh, CO2, to distend this area, and at the same time I'm suctioning that liquid. Again, you can see the black scope in the foreground with the white line marking, which gives us an idea of how far in the stomach we are. Once we've had a good look at the duodenum and the stomach, we withdraw all of the air or CO2 that's in the stomach, which I'm doing. You can see it collapse now. The stomach is collapsing. I'm withdrawing the scope. There's a small amount of blood you see. You're talking about a drop or two in those biopsy sites at the absolute most. Now I'm withdrawing the scope so that we're going to come back to the gastroesophageal junction, which we saw on insertion and you can see the transition of the lining here from the salmon pink uh, colored mucosa of the stomach to the whitish gray mucosa of the esophagus. I'm taking a biopsy here at the gastroesophageal junction. Again these are painless biopsies. This particular patient had a slightly irregular GE junction uh, with a fold of mucosa, which I've just biopsied a little bit higher than the rest of the GE junction. We're taking these biopsies to see if there's inflammation from acid coming back up into this region, causing inflammation of the distal or the end of esophagus which we call esophagitis, and that's secondary to gastroesophageal reflux disease. At this point, I'm withdrawing the scope, and you can see the mucosa of the esophagus. We come back slowly to look for any pathology here in the esophagus. Now I'm coming through the upper esophageal sphincter. I've just come through it there. 
and now I am sitting just behind the vocal cords. You can see the vocal cords pointed out in white. There's a left and a right, and the black arrow is pointing to where we have just been. When we intubate somebody and put them on life supports, we put a tube between those vocal cords right in the middle of the screen to ventilate the lungs. I'm sucking out some of the secretions that sometimes pool in that region. Now you can see the way the vocal cords move. I hope you enjoyed this look, an exciting look in fact, into the upper gastrointestinal tract with me today. I hope you found it educational and informative. Thank you for watching Medicine with Dr. Morin. I'm Dr. Keith Morin. Please feel free to leave a comment about what you saw today.